Hello, today we're going to talk about form validation and error handling with Firebase Auth. In the previous tutorial, we did a very simple application that just had two text fields, one for email address and one for password. And then we had three buttons, one to sign up a user, one to sign in a user, and one to log out a user. But there was zero form validation or error handling in that video, so we're going to do that today. So I'm going to briefly touch on what we did in the last video, but if you want the full tutorial, I'll link the video here and in the description. So we're going to do a super quick recap. I'm going to import the material package. I'm going to create our main, our run app, create our stateful widget by typing STFUL. Do our material app right here and our scaffold. Inside our scaffold, we had an app bar. Then inside our body, we had a center and a column. Inside the column, we had two text fields and then a row with three elevated buttons. And then we had a main access alignment of space around. So that's what it looked like at the beginning. Then we imported Firebase Core and Firebase Auth. In main, we will initialize the widgets flutter binding and we will initialize the Firebase app. Let's go ahead and make it async. At the top of auth app state, we had a couple of controllers, one for email and one for password. Inside the build here, we were getting the current user's information from Firebase. Here in the app bar, we had a ternary operator that was used to inform us if the user was logged in or not. We tied the controllers to these text fields. Inside the sign up on pressed, we had code to sign up the user within Firebase. And then we had a set state here. The same with sign in and log out. And again, a set state here. So we'll go ahead and test this by typing in test4 at test4.com. Testing for exclamation point and hit sign in. And we are now logged in. If I hit log out, it logs it out. Everything is working correctly. We'll go ahead and sign up user to make sure everything is working. All right, everything looks good. So we will be touching on two different things today, form validation and error handling. Form validation will trap some common issues without having to make as many calls across the internet. And then we will take any errors from Firebase we don't trap with form validation and handle those as well. Plus we'll do a few other cosmetic things. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure the text fields aren't empty. We'll start by adding this line at the top of auth app state. And then we will add the form and the key to the body. So I'm just gonna go here at the center widget by body and I'm gonna right mouse click and do refactor and then wrap with a widget. And I want to make it a form. And then I'll tie the key to the form here. So we'll first check to see if the email address is blank. So let's create a method at the bottom for that.
And then we will change the text field to a text form field and add the validator to it. Then we need to add some additional code in here. I'm going to do an if then statement to check if the key of the current state is validated. So since null safety is new to Flutter, I'm going to try to explain what's going on here. So here in the text form field, it will be filled out with an email address. When the sign up button is pressed, we call the validator validate email and the value of text form field is automatically sent through. So here's the validate email where it's looking for the email address and it's going to assign it to the variable form email. Now, because form email could in theory be null, we have a question mark there. So then we look to see if this variable is either null or empty. And if it is, then we just return an email address is required. But you'll also notice that the return value has a question mark as well. That's because if everything validates correctly, we do return null. So when the button is pressed, it attempts to validate. If it gets back a string, it displays that up here instead. If it gets back null, then it continues with the process. We can give it a test by removing the email address and hitting sign up. And email address is required, worked correctly. Now we're going to do the password validation. So we'll create the method down here. Now we'll come back up here and change this to text form field and add the validator. We'll clear out the password to test it out. And there's that error as well. So we can tell that the email address is blank, but we also want to know if it's in an incorrect format. We'll handle that by doing what's called a regular expression. So we're looking for a pattern that has an alphanumeric word, the at symbol, another alphanumeric word, a period, and another alphanumeric word. If the email address doesn't fit that format, we're going to return invalid email address format. So I'll type an email address in here that is clearly not the right format. Hit sign up and it says invalid email address format. If I put one that actually fits the format, which is alphanumeric word at alphanumeric word period alphanumeric word and hit sign up, the error goes away. On the password, we're also going to use a regular expression. As you see in the return message, we want the password to be at least eight characters, include an uppercase letter, a number, and a symbol. So we'll type something in here that clearly doesn't match. Hit sign up and it says, password must be at least eight characters, include an uppercase letter, number, and symbol. So, but what's going to happen now, I'm going to hit sign up and we got no error there. That's because the error is down here in the debug console. It says the email address is already in use by another account. So we handled formatting the email address and formatting the password and that's handled on our side. But now that we have the right format on email address and password, we're now passing on to Firebase and letting them return an error if something is wrong. So now we have to trap this error that we're getting back from Firebase. So for this tutorial, we're just going to do an error message right above these buttons so we know what the error is that we're getting back from Firebase. Right up here at the top of auth app state, I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm going to call it error message, and it's going to start out empty. And then right above the row here, I'm going to create a text widget. And then inside the sign up here, we're going to do what's called a try catch. What a try catch does is, well, it tries some code and if it fails for some reason, it reports back. In this case, we're going to try to sign up the user into Firebase and if it fails for some reason, we're going to take the error we get from Firebase and put it in that text widget. So now we should be able to try it. The test five at test five, we've already signed up. So if we click sign up, 
we get the error message. The email address is already in use by another account. So we'll go ahead and add it to our sign in as well. I'm just going to copy and paste it. Save a little bit of time. On the logout, we're not going to worry about validation because we're not using the email address field or password field to log out. So I'm just going to put a try here. Paste that in and save. So these are some basics on form validation and error handling. You can obviously do a lot more. For example, you could use a snack bar to display the errors, or you can use custom error messages, among other things. But this should give you a general idea so you can move forward with your app. Let's do a few cosmetic things that you might find useful and can probably expand on for your own application. The first thing we will do is disable the buttons depending on the user's status. We're going to put this code in the sign up and sign in buttons. So what this is saying is if the user is not null, which means that they are logged in, because if they are not logged in, their data is null. If they are logged in, they will have data. So if the user is logged in, we disable the button. Otherwise, we show the button. So you see up here that we are logged in and the sign up button is disabled. We'll do the same thing for the sign in button. You'll see it's now disabled as well. On logout, we're going to do the opposite. So if the user is logged out, disable this button. Otherwise, show the button. So now I should be able to log out. These became available because you'll need these to log back in. And then if I sign in, it switches back. So now we'll make it to where you see a little loading symbol here while it's communicating with Firebase. Back up here at auth app state, we're going to add a Boolean, which is a true or false. And we're going to call it is loading. Then inside the sign up here, right up here at the top, we're going to add a set state and set is loading equals to true. Down here in this set state, we will set is loading back to false. So what should happen here is the sign up button is pressed. It sets the is loading variable to true. It does whatever it's going to do in here and then it sets is loading back to false. And my laptop's a little bit old and a little bit slow, so we're waiting for it to update errors there. There it goes. But we have to do one more thing for it to actually show because right now it's just setting a variable. So up here where the text widget is for sign up, we're gonna add a ternary operator. We're gonna go ahead and make it white because otherwise it won't show up against the blue. So I'm gonna add in here color, colors, white. So if I log the person out now and I click sign up, you saw it for just a second there. Unfortunately, it's a little fast, but if you're on a slow connection out in the middle of nowhere, you're gonna see it a lot longer. We'll go ahead and add it to our other buttons. So if we sign in now, we see it. If we log out, the logout's too fast. But you see it, you get the idea. We could also take the error message here. We're clearing it out on the success, but really we could clear it out inside the set state here. So it'll be more visible if they get the same error twice. For example, if I click this right now, I get the error but you'll notice the error never goes away. 
so up here we're going to grab this and then we're going to move this up here and now it should clear out every time you hit the button so then it's a little bit more obvious that this is the same error but it's for the time you press the button there so we're going to do one last thing. We're going to take this error message here. We're going to put some padding around it and we're going to change it to red. So it's a little bit more obvious that it's an error. We'll go up here to the error message. I'm going to again, click on it, go to refactor, click on wrap with widget. Going to do padding. We're going to set the padding to edge insets all. and then give it a 12.0 padding. Okay, that makes it a little bit better with the padding around it. So now in the text widget, we'll enter style, text style, color, color is red. So there we go, that's looking a lot better. So we will wrap this tutorial up here. This should be some fundamentals you can use to do some form validation and some error handling. Obviously you can do a lot more than this. So I hope you expand on it and create something awesome. So you might also enjoy this video here. And if you're enjoying these videos, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.